Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. We are not told the duration the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. A lot are not shared until in verse 3 when we are told that at God saying, Let there be light. It doesn't matter. We are not here to calculate the duration you've spent in your suffering. It doesn't matter how long you've gone through your toils and your afflictions and your trials and troubles and problems. It doesn't matter how long you have gone. What, I, what matters to me, it is you are ceasing to suffer from this minute in Jesus' name. What matters, what matters now is that you are ceasing from suffering in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter the duration the spirit hovered in darkness but the times of light has come it doesn't matter how long your spirit has hovered over darkness over problems your heart being troubled and, pro and suffering your heart being in pieces torn away in pieces what matters is what is happening now the time is now just receive him and you rejoice for the rest of your life we are not on the duration which the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, which the Spirit of God hovered over waters by creating. The only thing we are told is until verse 3. He began by creating light. He will come and bring light so that the first miracle is to remove you from the darkness you are in. He himself separated light from darkness. May the Lord Jesus Christ Move into your situation, move into your business, into your marriage, into your life, into your, into your career, into your employment, and remove everything troubling you, everything giving you suffering and troubling, everything troubling you. May that thing be its end be now in Jesus name. May you suffer not from this minute. May suffering end completely from this minute in Jesus name. God spoke to the situation then, and all God certainly. I'm here to decree to you that God is coming to speak to your situation now. Rise up as he is to speak to it. Also speak to your situation. Because we see such in Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 10. He spoke to the situation. Ezekiel spoke to the situation which was surrounding him. Rise up to speak to every situation also. Declare blessings and breakthrough, even if it is how hard. Decree it now. Can I read you Ezekiel 37? Verse 1 to 10. Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 10. The heart of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bonds. I will make a breath under you, and you will come to flesh, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with his skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. 
but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds on breath and breathe into this slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and brethren and them they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. He was told to prophesy and I prophesy to every dry bone in your life. I prophesy to every dry situation in your life. I prophesy to every dry marriage in your life. I prophesy that your marriage will not be dry from this minute to receive life again. I decree that your business will not be like dry bones anymore, but will be full of blessings and breakthrough is your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. May everything which are dried out receive life once again, once more as it was before in Jesus' name. But remember, Ezekiel was in spirit. He wasn't in his soul or in his flesh. He was in spirit. He spoke to that situation. And he doubted not. We don't see Ezekiel, you know, arguing it out with God. He was faithful to God. He obeyed and he did exactly as God ordered him to do. And if you obey the voice of God speaking to you through my mouth today, today and do exactly as I'm telling you to do, your life will never be the same again. Thou his word, through his word, there was a big army, a vast army. May your dry bones receive flesh from this time on and forevermore. From Genesis 3, we don't see God doing anything alone. Everything he did, he commanded these people to speak. And I'm here to speak to your situation. It doesn't matter how long you've gone through this problem and suffering. The end to this suffering is now in the name of Jesus Christ. What is hard to man is always possible to God. Because even when you are speaking to your situations, you are not speaking to them through your name, but to the name uh, or via the name of Jesus Christ. Problems and troubles you have are not from God. They are orchestrated by the devil himself, who is a schemer. He schemed to destroy your life. He schemed to destroy your future. But I'm here to tell you that you should fear not. It doesn't matter that your things are giving or bearing no fruits. But I'm here today to give you a word. It doesn't matter how long you've tried, but this time round, you are going to be that successor. You are going to succeed in Jesus' name. You are going to be successful. It doesn't matter. You've gone throughout the night like the gentlemen, Peter, James, and John, and maybe Andrew was present with Peter, his brother. It doesn't matter how long you've tried, but I want you to believe and try, not alone, but with Jesus Christ. Get him along with you. Go with him. Because we see through the Spirit of God, Ezekiel went. He was not alone, but with the Spirit of God. And every word he was assured to speak, he spoke and he, he saw the fruits. He, he, Jesus assured Peter to lower his net. And he did as Jesus had instructed him. And the outcome you know very well the match he got was to break even the boats but then here you are God is speaking to you just humble yourself out he is speaking to your situation let him in and you regret not for the rest of your life it doesn't matter how dry it is don't use your knowledge and your faith into this because nothing is impossible before the eyes of God. He just says it and it is final. Nothing can fight the word of God. Nobody can change God's plan and God's idea. If he has a plan to prosper you, nobody will stand in between that plan. You must be prospered in Jesus' name. Because I believe once he says yes, it is yes. And when he says no, it is no. And today 
Today's word is saying yes to your life. He is saying yes to your situation. I speak to you. Rejoice. Rise up. Rejoice. Because all this suffering and trials, there are times to, uh, to, to end is now. The times to see this problem is now. You won't see it any longer. In the name of Jesus Christ, coronavirus is going away. It is leaving us in Jesus' name. We won't be troubled any longer. And clear and clear. It came very quickly, and the way it came in a quick manner, the same way I commanded to go away and destroy the spirit behind this coronavirus in the holy, precious name of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 tells me Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He says that, For I know the plans I have to, for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jesus is speaking to people who are suffering in the Babylonians' hands. They have no place to call home. They have no land to call theirs. The houses are not permanent. They are not theirs. They are actually what we call the refugees. But then the refugees, being a refugee is another thing. A refugee is a person who runs from their home country to another country because of the danger there. They did not run from their home country because of the danger. They were, they were forced to leave their homes. And then in such a situation, they can't access the temple, they can't go there, they can't do this or that. They are told, for I know the plans I have for you, the plans to prosper you, the plans to make you strong. You know, you can imagine. The plans to prosper you and not to harm you. But now, the harm of Nebuchadnezzar and the other ruthless leaders is still and already in them. This is speaking to you. You know what you are going through. Just as Joseph was speaking to this man, uh, and Jeremiah, sorry, was speaking to this man, you may not also be understanding what I'm telling you because of the, the, the harshness of the problem you are going through. But just hear, hear came to this voice. Understand and accept this word I'm releasing to you. It doesn't matter how, how, how hard the situation is to you. Once Jesus gets in, Everything will be well. These people faced the problems they had and the problems they faced because they had run away from God. And God now chased them to stay where people stay without God because Israel was a God, uh, you know, uh, God's land. Is uh, we call it the Holy Land up to today. And you know, God, you know, forsook them and they went out of Him into the hands of people who, who worship idols and who, so to speak, are like the worshippers of today. You may be suffering, maybe because you've, you know, hardened your heart. You may be going through what you are going through because you are running away from the call of God. Maybe you are running away from loving Him, from serving Him, from making him the Lord of your heart, the Lord of your life. How I pray that you hear these words and accept them and honor them by receiving Jesus Christ, by making him the Lord of your heart, by making him your savior. The Israelites thought they were wise. They ignored the messages from the prophet. They ignore the messages given to God to them via the prophets. They did not hear them. They actually ha attacked the, the messengers who are the prophets. They even killed, they maimed many. And we see now, because God wanted them to remember how it was before they forsook him. That is why he took them into this trouble, into these problems, into this suffering. 
he, he, he forgot them not. But then he sent them. It is like the way the government corrects, you know, the, the air and citizens. The government is not happy to have prisons. Actually, prisons are, you know, a, 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 a burden to the government. But then those are correction now in institutions. They are there to correct people. And the prison which God formed for the Israelites was the Babylonian Empire. He allowed the Babylonians to touch the Israelites. And remember, when you read 2 Kings chapter 24, you know, Nebuchadnezzar only went out, carried the elites of the land. He did not bother, you know, the, the weaklings. He went with the elites. Elites only. My brothers and sisters, what you are going through, there are men who went through the same. There are many who underwent what you are going through. But I'm calling you today to think, to reason. And the moment you do, your life will never be the same again. The problem you are going through, it is God's plan to call you back. Because you rush back to God so that you can get that comfort. He is waiting for you. Do away with the pride you have. Run back to Jesus. Hold him and you get that strong con. You get that strong comfort which will strengthen you afresh. And you'll be like a renewed child of God. And you'll be purely renewed. I decree that you finish well in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 14. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 14. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is against flesh and blood, but again, but for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can ex ex extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. My brothers and sisters, we see that we are not fighting via the blood and flesh and body, but we are fighting with the spirits. We are fighting in the spiritual realm. I won't dwell into this much because I will come to that. But I want you to know that the person you think fights you, that person has no problem. Never have any beef with anybody because everybody behaves depending on depended on the spirit behind, behind them. What kind of a spirit do you think is backing your enemy? The witch, you know, the person who attacks you. The moment you stop seeing the person, but go into seeing the spirit behind that, 
Like when Peter is telling Jesus, you are not going to, to, to face this, you are not going to die. Jesus did not see Peter. He saw the spirit which was behind that man, Peter. Peter the spirit which was Satan himself. And he said, get behind me, Satan. And the moment you begin to get understanding about this, the moment you stop seeing people in your problems, but either see your lack of accepting Christ, or you see the devil in it, the better. If your life is not guided by Jesus, then it is guided by the devil. And if the devil is on top of your life, you'll be full of problems. It will depend whether the person fighting you is fighting you for what. But what I know, behind everything you see, there is a spirit behind it. Either the spirit of light or the spirit of darkness. Isaiah 53, verse 1, says that all the way to verse 3 who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and unfamiliar with his suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. You have alone, you have a lot of misfortunes. You may have a lot of trouble or sicknesses or suffering. But like these men failed to listen to the messages sent by God. If you won't receive this, we are telling you. You continue suffering. But if you hearken to the voice which is calling you to receive Christ once more, which is calling you to perfect your life by going on doing on being where what you are supposed to be, by doing what is right, by being a righteous person, if you would hearken to the voice which is calling you to live sinful life and begin living a life full of holiness and righteousness, then you will continue suffering. I call you today. To receive Jesus Christ, if you have not received him, I call you to hearken to the voice, this voice which is calling you to hold, doing anything which is wrong, and to begin doing what is righteous, doing what is good, and you will never regret for the rest of your life. My brothers and my sisters, I call you today, I request you to examine your life. Examine your fault, and if you are not living to the standard which you are supposed to, to live, the standard guided for by the Lord, then you need to return to the light and receive Jesus once more. Please do away with the sinful nature and sinful life. Stop living a sinful life and decide to begin a new life from now on. Receive Jesus. Make him your love. Make him your Lord and Savior. Make him your God. Make him your friend. And I pray that you live a righteous life. And at the end of the day, your hand will be full of joy. You won't die, but you sleep. You transform. You get it transformed to another nature, to another life. Because you are created to rejoice. You are created to be the head, not the tail. I pray that from this minute you won't suffer that from this minute every suffering every problem ceases from being in you now and new life begins from this minute in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your life I pray for your family I pray for your businesses I command the Spirit of God to back you in everything in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you won't suffer from this minute that you won't suffer for the rest of your life that is suffering is over in your life in Jesus name may you suffer not may suffering not to be your portion from today may blessings be your portion I decree and I declare breakthrough I decree and I declare God's mercy upon your life I decree and I declare God's favor upon you may you alive be full of light may you alive be full of protection from God may God bless you 
and keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace forever. You who had no peace, receive peace in Jesus' name. You who was lacking blessings, receive blessings. If you are lacking health, receive healing in Jesus' name. I command every sickness to die and get off your life. I decree and I declare total breakthrough. May you never be the same again from this minute. In the name of Jesus Christ. My son, you are blessed. My daughter, you are blessed. And I decree that these blessings is permanent. Receive in Jesus' name. Amen. May the spirit of the Lord fill you. May the spirit of wisdom and understanding fill you. May the spirit of counsel and might fill you. May the spirit of the knowledge of God and the fear of the Lord fill you. May the spirit of God empower you. May you be filled by the spirit which proceeds from the Father and the Son. And may your life be full of God's blessings. May the spirit of the Lord fill you now, walk with you, go with you. May you be full of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. May you be full of the powers and the works of the Holy Spirit. And may you never be the same again. I decree blessings unto your life. Receive blessings. And never again will you be the same. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you don't know Christ, I request you to repeat these words from me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give in to you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my soul to you. I, 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 I repent all the sins that I've committed. I make you today to be my Lord. I receive you today to be my Lord and the Savior of my life. I pray that you accept me and heal me in Jesus' name. Amen. Having said these words, you are a born again child of God. I bless you. Thank you.